Welcome to the Third Take podcast, brought to you by Islington Radio and hosted by Laura McMahon. And today's guest, Luke Chilton, comedian. Start, I want to start capturing for when the moment you say one Jesus good thing Christ. is. Jesus Christ, you said this is low pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Do okay, good. So, so. <laughs> look, if, you're not, if you feel like it's not going well, just look at me and my face will tell you. All right. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> we haven't even started yet. This is beautiful. <laughs> okay. this, you're going to rinse me for this, but Star Wars, the original trilogy. Okay, yeah. Love it. Okay, yep. No, Me- no, no. My name's no Luke because I was named after Luke Skywalker, no, it which isn't. is the nerdiest wow. thing in the world. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Star Wars, I, I think the first three are so no, good. My parents didn't say that, but I decided. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think like Star Wars is such an interesting one because they haven't made anything good since then. Okay. And it's the one of the biggest franchises ever yep. but it's literally going off what 50 years now of good faith because yeah, they've nailed exactly. it yeah, which yeah, I think yeah. is amazing from yes. a cultural phenomenon yeah that um, people are still defending it and I mean it's, it's like... trash now it's yes. been trash and like people trying so hard to support <laughs> this dying franchise yeah. like it's on yeah. some life support system and everyone's like just let granddad go yeah like, it's like mm. he's a one hit wonder yeah. and everyone's like no it's <laughs> like the best was great. it was <laughs> such a good hit okay. um so I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. Watership Down, again, because it's... Uh, have you seen Watership Down, the cartoon? No. Okay, it's a you, right? And it's probably... Me, the person. No, no, no. The film is rated you. Oh, it's my God. A, it's a children's I you were like, movie. It's you. It's no, no, so it's you. you. And oh, I was no. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the inside of your own mind, Laura. <laughs> I was like, I was like uh, okay. I was like, I'm definitely going to watch it now, at least just to be offended. <laughs> no, no. Watership Down is a children's movie that they used to show on Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's rated you. It's the most violent, horrific, and terrifying story it okay. should be rated 15. Okay. Like, it, they disembowel the main characters. Okay. Like, Doesn't, all the characters are you murdered. Mean, you mean unrated? Uh, no, you means children. suitable for children, okay. actively promoted to children. All right. That was but someone's it, last day yeah. at the certification <laughs> yeah. office, and they're like, you know what? Like, no, 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 but it's not, because it, it was a novel, and the novel is, like, real clear thing about <laughs> immigration. Like, yeah. it, it's sort of like Animal Farm. Like, right. it's like a metaphor yeah. or whatever. Um, and so they've got this book, and they've read the book, and they've been like, oh, but it's got animals, and it's going to be animated. And I it's before, that. it was made in the 70s, maybe, the 80s. So mm-hmm. it was before they were like, oh, animation can be for adults. So they're like... <laughs> This is for kids. Yeah, this is for kids because it's animated. And the, I'm pretty sure the guy who made it is like, uh-huh. You could, yeah. Really? You could, you could, you could. Are you sure? Because, like, I've just drawn I've just drawn his guts spilling out of his little chest while he screams and his mum watches on The thing is, though, horror. you could never be like, I don't know about that. And they'd be like, listen, the little mermaid dies in the book version. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what are we talking about yeah, here? Yeah. Like, come on. Or, like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, we love it. We actually forgot to come up with something for Christmas this year. So yeah. is this Christmas? Could, you, could the guts like, be covered in tinsel? Or he's wearing a little hat? I don't know. There's a hat at the end. <laughs> little hat, little Christmas hat. <laughs> okay. And okay. then are those the three? No, I've got three okay, more. Right. Oh, I've got so this. many movies. No, no, I Sorry, I like, couldn't no, decide. No, no, that's fine. If mm. you'd come in and just been like, actually, I don't know, I'd be like, what? Well, that that yeah. would be unacceptable. Yeah, to me, and I feel like we've we've worked together enough times that yeah. like it was like a. If there, you, there was a reason we stopped working together. <laughs> get, the second I came get, back, you just got all these PTSD get, memories coming back. If you, get, if you get to the door and you haven't done the homework, you are not coming in, Luke. Yeah. Well, the teacher stuff's coming. Yeah, back. you were like, like it's a children's movie. And I remember I was like, being in trouble all the time. A child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But no, so the other movie I've got, Ghost in the Shell, mm-hmm. not the American one, the the animated one from 1989, I think. Okay. Amazing movie. Yep, okay. And super influenced me as a thinking person, okay. if not as an artist. Yep. Uh, okay, and Some then... Some would say that those should go hand in hand, even yeah. though a lot of the times they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great influence on something in my life. I don't know what. Yeah. And then the other two are Kung Pao, which is... Arguably a terrible movie, but I fucking love it. And then... What is it? It's a... a it, it, how the hell do I explain it? Okay, it's a guy. It's a comedy movie. Mm-hmm. It's probably a B movie, maybe maybe even a C movie. Okay. I don't know. But it's yep. in that ilk of like airplanes. So it's completely slapstick. Uh. But what he's done is he's... The guy who's made it has rec- uh, taken an old Chinese kung fu movie yep. and put himself into scenes. Amazing. And just like use like green screen he's and stuff to insert it? himself. Yeah, and he's just an he's American. Used, he's used green screen. Yeah, yeah. So he's like used green screen to put himself into scenes. Oh my god. But this was like early nineties maybe or something like I that. Love that. And it was um 
and like, everyone original. hated it. it no one enjoyed this movie original. apart from me. I used to rent it on repeat at Blockbusters. I used oh to go to Blockbusters and I'd be like, I'm getting Kung Pao again, and oh I'd show it to God. everyone. I love that, because in some ways you would be like, uh, people would be like, this is a stupid movie, but in mm. other ways it's like he was the first Tom Hardy to oh. be like, I'll play the, I'll do all the roles. Yeah, he he, he was like ahead of his time. Like This is like a TikTok movie, essentially. Right, okay. Like, um, voicing, like he revoiced all the characters and What's stuff. What's the plot? The plot is... Uh, what happens in the thing? He's like the greatest kung fu master ever. <laughs> he's, he's the oh, chosen one. He wrote one. it himself. He started yeah. it himself. Also, yeah. The only actor in it is him. <laughs> this is actually this is already my favorite because he like in some ways you just go what, but in other ways you go hmm, that's the kind of can do but- attitude we need. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, this is it. There is an argument to be made that it's so ahead of its time, right? That yeah. it, but but then also I've rewatched it and I'm like actually it it's bad in the way. Well, you've seen Airplane, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some people detest that movie and some people love it. It's right. so polarizing because yeah. it's like if you're not on board for that humor, yeah. it you're going to hate it. And it's exactly the same kind of like, same, well, it's so, it's like deliberately unfunny yes, or just tedious or it's so childish. But to me, it's the best thing. But I guess it's I've like the film, the you know, The Room with yeah. Tommy Wiseau and, and you just go... Yes, that, that's made a bunch of money. But but can... that yeah, but that was made unintentionally. <laughs> this has achieved what it wanted to achieve. <laughs> it's just he doesn't give a fuck. Like he's just like I'm making my movie that I want to be. It's deliberately bad. It's so bad. What, no no, hundred percent. He okay. knows what he's doing. Right. Yeah okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent no, knows what he's doing. Like, this, hang on, this might just be because it was your like favorite for such a long time. No no, and you're like, no no. No He's in. This was a choice. Him this and Tommy was our geniuses. Okay. Do you have you ever reached out to him, the Kung Pao guy? No, Steve. He's He's quite a big guy in a... I think he was did SNL for a while or something. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Steve something. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe he's not that famous. I can't remember. Okay. But um, he's definitely been involved in bigger projects and stuff. Because okay. that's how... The, I mean, the movie had, like, a big budget and stuff. Right. Well, uh, it didn't need a big budget. But <laughs> big budget. <laughs> Half of it was From his already. mom's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. um, but that movie was amazing in terms of, like... Uh, I don't know. It was like a cult movie mm. for me that I actually actively shared with people. Yes. Which, so it was like the original viral sort of. Do you think thing. it's because it was like, how did he get away with this? Not like, because previously. There's like, nothing like it. Yeah. But there's also, it appeals to me because I love old Chinese kung fu movies. I used yeah. to watch them. So there's so many in jokes. Right. So it's already, it's a niche movie on so many levels. Yeah. Because a lot of people watch it. And if you haven't watched a Chinese kung fu movie, mm-hmm specifically well, made in the 80s the well no, no no but it's also like you have to watch is it from a period of the 80s when yep. they're all dubbed terribly because oh they God. used to be dubbed by two guys yep. and they dubbed everything they dubbed all the anim- anime from that era and they're just two drunk guys and they're literally like everyone comes into the thing being like oh hi buddy my name's Derek <laughs> and I'm here to kick your ass he's like oh uh. I see you've known like the you've mastered the eagle eye fist style and they're just making up the plot that's perfect because none on. of them know how to speak Cantonese I have to tell you and this is gonna I'm gonna pause so that you can throw in the historical references because obviously in Australia mm. we do know history because of yeah. what the history is. Right. You get it. Um, so You guys made history. <laughs> <laughs> All of history is in Australia. I just, whatever the British people tell me happened, I say happened. <laughs> okay. Um, no, no. So there's a film, speaking of dubbing, there's a mm. documentary called Chuck Norris versus Communism. Do you know about this? No. Okay. So it's about communist I don't know. Well, there was Russia? A, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. There was a place. <laughs> there was a place that was governed under communism yeah. at a certain time, right? Okay. And during that time, obviously, all American films were banned, right? Okay. So. I'm going to guess Cuba. I don't know. I could Google. I will Google in a we second. Don't, we're a creative <laughs> podcast. We'll do, let's just say it's fucking Switzerland. That's fucking you communist. Know what? I, actually, I, I'll just cut to be like. Slovakia, and then it'll carry on. Um, so, so they basically they started during the war. It was it okay. a war that was around. That? You Maybe. know what? We'll cut that as know. well. Yeah. Um, so they were trafficking in VHS tapes yeah. of American films. Yeah. And then they would go to people's houses on Saturday nights. It was happening everywhere, and they would watch these VHS tapes that were illegal everywhere of else. Chuck Norris. Well, Chuck Norris was the most popular, but there was only one woman that was doing all of the translations. <laughs> so she did all of the voices, but she did not respect swearing. So oh. everyone from that time period thinks of her voice when they think of, and like Chuck Norris will walk in and he'll be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And her voice will just go, don't be so mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you bullies are in yeah. for a real thumping. It's a real, 
it's a really good documentary. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. cuz the exact opposite happened with Kung Japanese f- manga <laughs> okay. where they added obscenity cuz they didn't know what to do. Oh, so right. there's all these uh sort of um 80s style dubs where they'll yeah. have characters who are doing some big exposition about the plot and yeah. the the dubbers have just changed it to Hey, where's Brian? Fuck shit, fuck shit, fuck shit, <laughs> cunt. But I mean actually that. That's a quote from Violence Jack, which is like, I'm just like, these guys are just taking the piss. And they were, they admitted it. They were just like, yeah, we were just pissed in a thing. And we would just literally do like Saying five movies back to back. Amazing. We didn't speak, like there was no one there checking whether we were actually following the plot. So oh, half the time that. they made up their own plot. Mm. <laughs> actually, um, I love that. Yeah, I wish, it's you so know, fun. If the sound cut in a cinema, I'd be like, <clears throat> don't worry guys I got this <laughs> but but it, it's literally like that it's like hanging out that's why those films are such a joy to watch because yeah, it's like yeah. it's like hanging out with your drunk friends yep, yeah. commenting on a movie but they've actually made yeah, the movie and you're work you're just going okay yeah, like, yeah okay alright um, I love that or like the what's the where you watch uh Pink Floyd, you listen to it and watch The Wizard of Oz. Have you heard of that? What? No, I've okay. never done that. So you, no, me neither. But <laughs> other people have, thing? and they said it's great. Is this you, Australian history? You, no, no, no. This is a UK thing. Um, so I think maybe I hope I haven't made this up. But often, if I have, I'll just cut and it's say, you, actually, yeah. it was about Queen. At the end. <laughs> um, no, so it's like Pink. You listen to Pink Floyd, The Wall, mm-hmm. from start to finish, and you either watch The Wizard of Oz the whole way through, okay, or yeah, you can't watch it in reverse. Yeah. So you watch The Wizard of Oz and you start them both at the same time. Right. And apparently it's like insane, but not. It's like a thing. People do it. Yeah. I didn't. So it's insane. What, what do you mean it's insane? What happens? I don't know. I haven't done it. But like people are like, you should do <laughs> you just, it. You just die at the end. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Suddenly I just mean, buy all of Pink I, Floyd's I assume, merchandise. I, I don't know why. I assume what happens is the same as what happens in The Wizard of Oz. Because yeah. you can't change it. <laughs> but people say it's like a real thing to oh, do. I'll do that when know? I go home. Yeah, okay. Sounds, please, I'm going to yeah. be so pissed off if it's the wrong music. <laughs> oh my God, all the wrong films. Yeah. <laughs> my Laura, <laughs> this is good. just insane. Yeah. It makes no sense whatsoever. But then it would be like that time. There was an artist that did a piece of piano that was like called 222 or something else. And it was just, he walked out and he sat there and it was de- he didn't play anything. It was silent and everyone was like, oh, it's a work of art. It makes commentary on it, blah, blah, blah. So maybe it is just like a meta thing. Like, <laughs> had, had he deliberately not... Yes. Oh, okay. Like it wasn't like wasn't he like had nervous. accidentally had it on silent and then they were like, this is great. And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. It was like he came out and sat down and then just didn't play anything and everyone Everyone was lost like, their mind. Yeah. God, I need to do art like uh, that. Yeah, that sounds exactly. a lot easier yeah, than just, trying I just to be walk funny. In, yeah, walk in with a mirror, hold it up and yeah. just be like... I always, I always had a uh, art project if I ever got the funding mm-hmm. where I wanted to do so everyone comes and sits mm-hmm. in a theater space yep. and then they're waiting for the curtains to come up and when the curtains come up there's another audience on the other side oh, so it's like you, a yeah. fake theater that yep. just looks on a stage and then they just sit there and nothing we don't tell them to do anything yeah and then we just see what happens okay I don't want to ruin be, your dreams has but someone done that already there is a show called oh, no. Nathan for you Oh, I love Nathan for you. Okay, have you seen? There's one where he um, he gets a theater audience. Basically, yes. this bar finds out that you can't finds out the law in America is yeah. you can't smoke inside. Yeah, unless it's a theater venue or a theater show. There's like this one bylaw. So they set up, they sell tickets and say it's a show, mm. and they build in an audience section. Right. Which you pull back the curtain and you're watching the bar and the bar just is the normal bar. Oh, that's and hilarious. They don't yeah. tell the bar p- patrons that this is going on. So There's just people watching smoke. them. So they, <laughs> they just say, you can smoke in here. It's fine. So they're all smoking and watching. And then the people that are watching it as a theater performance think they're just watching a theater performance. And then they uh, interview people afterwards and say, what did you think of the show? And they're yeah. like, yeah, this is great. Oh, I love that. That's it's such really a good. head yeah. fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's your style. Someone wrote a story. Um, I think it's B. J. Novak wrote a story about what if the, what if Elvis faked his own death, then moved to Vegas to be an Elvis impersonator. That would be such because he good would get move. to keep being himself. Yeah, it'd be so funny if everyone get... was like, he's not great. Yeah, he's really exactly. not quite got it. And yeah, yeah, and to kind of get his anonymi- anonymity, yeah, and then you know the thing, the thing, yeah, the anonymousness, yeah, back, back. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> you know, which is whatever. Okay, who next film? <laughs> uh, next film was Drunken Master. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen that? No. Okay, that's Jackie Chan's 
uh, is Jackie Chan in the 80s. Mm-hmm. So it's like a really classic kung fu movie. Yeah. Um, but I grew up watching it. I loved it. Jackie Chan was like my absolute hero. I wanted to be Jackie Chan so bad when I was a kid. Why? Because um, of the Because he's stunts. fucking sick. Yeah, the stunts are amazing. <laughs> right. And like, he's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, I mean, he's, he's Charlie Chaplin, yeah. but. Okay. Like the next inheritor of whatever that is, but I'm I'm always like I especially like the so like Drunken Master is not like his his best movie by any means, yeah. but it's just like a childhood okay. uh, uh, sort of um, treasure or whatever. And it was a, one of the first movies to be really funny. Yeah, that is also like a kung fu movie, which was like Jackie Chan's absolute mo. But it's before he had like carte blanche to just do all the craziest stunts. Right, amazing. So okay. it's like seeing him in his actual like youth and cherub cherub sort of faced and do you think you could do you think that there's room for kung fu films to come back i fucking love kung fu films yeah right. and would- but i want them to be like the 80s again like i hate like all the new ones are like really i mean they are amazing like mm-hmm. like i really like tony jars movies and i really like uh, all the raid movies they're really exciting mm-hmm. um and those guys are like st- stunt performer wise amazing donnie yen's fantastic mm-hmm. but they're all quite like I don't know. There was something... Jackie Chan just, like, nailed it. All the movies he made in Hong Kong in the 80s... Do you think because he's got a certain goofiness? Yeah, there's there's real humour to the whole thing. But yeah. it's also but the stunts are just on a level of, like... His whole stunt team mm-hmm. are just throwing themselves out of buildings and Wait, just doing a, a role. Team? There's a whole <laughs> team, yeah. Because, you know, Tom Cruise does. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, but this okay. is the thing. Like, Jackie Chan shouldn't even be alive. Right. Like, the, the amount of, like fucking life-threatening injuries he's had Mm -hmm. but his whole thing was just like if i'm doing it you're doing it and like health and safety he couldn't do those movies in america because of insurance problems really yeah whereas in china they don't give a fuck and they would just let him (laughs) about anything yeah (laughs) (laughs) but they'd also just let him he'd be like i don't know how long the movie's gonna take because i have to do this really specific stunt okay and but they just let him do it and that's why it was like whereas hollywood so like you've got to you've got to be done by this time and yeah. we need all this insurance. Whereas Jackie Chan's just like, well, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like oh, no. such a different attitude to, like you couldn't, you couldn't make those films just legally now, but they're, mm. the payoff is so much bigger. But it's the same way if like Charlie Chaplin tried to do some of the stunts he did. Go on. Now, like dropping off a clock through, mm-hmm. have you seen the one where he drops off the tower? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so he actually, he goes on to the <laughs> Sounds top like of... Sounds like not. He, he goes, Why am I defensive? <laughs> no, the answer no, is no. So, so he literally, he goes <laughs> to the top of a clock tower that yeah. is like, I don't know, 80 meters. Like, it's fucking huge. Like, yeah. If he drops, he dies. Yeah. And the whole thing is, the reason he doesn't die is because there's like these awnings that he bounces through. This might yeah. have been Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin is one of them. Okay. Anyway, and they have to burst through the awnings mm-hmm. to stop his fall. So he goes through three of them and then he ends up on the bottom. But he's actually, that is, he's doing the actual stunt just for real. What yeah. you see on, there's no trick. Yeah. It's just, he's going to drop that, well, that's <laughs> through the, the awnings. It, and they're just like, it? we pray that these awnings actually work because we've never done this. Oh <laughs> so we don't God. know if he's going to survive or not. And Jackie Chan recreated that in one of his really? films. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah. And he did, it, cool. he did it four times back like and everyone talks about Tom Cruise doing his own stunts and like yeah but they're so safe yeah. in comparison to this that stuff whereas Jackie Chan's literally just like I'm gonna jump off the <laughs> fucking building you know there's a story about Tom Cruise where it was like he says uh, yeah so I got my stunt guy along and I said this is what we want to do this is what mm. we want to do blah 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 and, and the guy goes yeah look you can't do that <laughs> Tom Cruise goes <laughs> So I got myself a new stunt guy. <laughs> it's just like, okay. Um, I mean, Jackie Chan and Tom Cruise as a team up. That, that Matt, would be, why wouldn't they? I mean, why they're they? so old now. <laughs> That's what's kind of the thrill of it. Yeah, you know? I mean, Jackie Chan's still making movies as far as And I'm so aware. is Tom Cruise. Yeah. They're both available. But it's not quite as good when they were... Together. You know, if they were like 25 and they got together... <laughs> got together. And they got together. They just made out. <laughs> Imagine if it was like a rom com where it's yeah. like because at first they would hate each other, like they were yeah. rivals in competition, but over time they'd it's grow like, to I'm, respect I'm the biggest each other. stuntman. <laughs> yeah. um, when you no, talk- but Tom Cruise cannot compare Jack- Jackie Chan is the best stuntman ever. Yeah, I think okay. in terms of performance and willingness to get hurt and pull <laughs> off stuff, like a metaphor for yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, when you talk about Charlie Chaplin, he I was reading his auto. Autobiography. No, his he biography. He wrote an autobiography. His biography. Oh, his yeah, biography. I was going to say, not yeah. written by him. Why do I say all the facts wrong? <laughs> and they were talking about how he, um, when he was, so he worked for studios for a while and then he earned enough so that he could do his own films. And on his mm. own films, it was like not 
pre-written it was like you showed up and the day was shooting and then you would first of all go okay now this happens here and now this happens for actually no now we want her over here and actually now the plot is this so he would go into it kind of just letting Freeform. things happen organically yeah. and then sort of directing but self-directing and then being like actually no that didn't work scrap it let's change yeah, the plot yeah. um which would kind of be a really fun way of doing it if you think about the level of like control that one person yeah. has over there. I mean that that can really go two ways because that's <laughs> what I think is the problem with Star Wars is they gave George well everyone said they gave George Lucas too much yeah because they George Lucas is amazing at world building but can't write a script so like that's why the prequels are fucking awful because they're like George can just do everything oh and then they're like on, that's a, that, but then that's the problem of getting success in yeah. that everyone's like I love it yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah and no like, one's, you, you need sure? someone to be like no George Does it, he, was the, he you... can't be banging his sister yeah, exactly like, <laughs> and he was just like what if and you yeah. go no dude no. don't and also don't you like I get like I get the value of like being able to like say your ideas uncensored and oh mm. I shouldn't be censored I understand that however <laughs> At a certain point, like, you would be like, I don't know if I want to put a film out where I am trying to make the main character bang their sister. Yeah. Like, I'd, yeah. Be, I'd just be like, yeah, but I don't, you know, if I was responsible for, like, the Saw films, I'd be like, okay, like, I get it, but, like, do I want this to be what I'm saying is the thing? <laughs> you know, like, it's just such a, like, weird thing. Yeah, Saw so must be an awful one where you're like, it's not about the violence. <laughs> There's Met- a secret meaning there. Yeah, it's a metaphor. <laughs> it's, for- it's, it's whenever someone makes a satire and then someone takes it at face value and they're like, uh, yeah, I love that. you've fucked up. The, when, um, you've missed the point and now I've created this monstrosity yeah. and my name's on it. <laughs> and then, so that's like um, Spinal Tap was received like by a couple of people as like a musical documentary. Really? And they were like, oh, yeah. this band is cool. <laughs> um, but <laughs> hang on, what was the thing you were saying before? I've- that's that thing where if you made Saw mm. and then you were like, well, I'm making a commentary on you guys are sick for watching it. And it's yeah. like, but you still made it. It's such yeah, a yeah. like, you started. It's like, what are you doing? You, you've here? become the thing you right. tried to criticize or destroy or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. My, my friend went to a QA and a with Darren Aronofsky. Oh, his, do, you, do you like his movies? Uh, I liked... As, this might not be his movie, and I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> As you know, I cut everything where I look like an like idiot. Mission Impossible. <laughs> Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> I he and he did, does his own I stunts. It's well fucking wild. Mission Impossible. Um, so I liked Black Swan. Mm. If he did that. Yeah. I and even he if he didn't. So yeah. that I loved, but that was such an interesting, like... like have you, have you so seen much... Blue Velvet? No, Velvet Blue. No. Or Blue Velvet. I can't remember. Blue Valentine the... is a film, but not... No, no, it's... it's um... It's a manga film, anime. Is uh, no, you know. they've taken no. Tr- no, no, but it's, it's um, he's obviously <laughs> taken in, no. he's taken inspiration from it. It's okay. the same story, yep. And there's shots that are shot for shot the same, right? Um, I'm not saying he ripped it off. I think he just used it as a thing. He... But it's 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 incredible. Yeah. But it's I love how Japan, specifically Japan mm. and the West, like copycat each other. Yeah, and, and it's then fine. It's, yeah, but yeah. but it's also like they make good stuff. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Some not yeah. all the time. I mean, yeah. thinking the Ghost in the Shell fucking Hollywood movie is the worst <laughs> piece of shit I've ever seen. <laughs> um, but like, it is really funny when you think like uh, like Ghost in the Shell is influenced by Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and and I, I've always at, loved the little. Yeah, if you look I don't at know, the departed, piggybacking on each you, other. You, departed, Scorsese. Yes. That's like. Almost shot by shot. Yeah, the Chinese action movie. Infernal yeah, uh, Infernal, Infernal Affairs, Affairs, which is yeah. a great movie. Yeah, um, but I, I actually prefer the ending of uh, the Chinese one. Can you tell me how it ends? The um, uh, uh, what well, it doesn't the sound rat. like you prefer. No, no, no. no. The, the rat. rat. The rat survives, and then oh, it's damn. left with him feeling really guilty i think i've only watched this once i can't remember i remember one of the characters just gets shot in the head in the departed and the other one he survives and then he yeah matt damon survives the the ending is him sort of contemplating the death of the other rat Mm -hmm. because they're both rats yeah whereas Um, in departed they both but they both die yeah and it's it i thought it was more interesting if one of them lives because there's sort of the i mean they're mirror images of each other right yeah so it's like the who's who is heroic, who's not, and who yeah. deserves to die. Whereas yeah. in the departed, it's like, everyone must die. <laughs> it's so great, though. The end, yeah, it's, it's by great. By the end, it's just like it, another yeah. gunshot. And you're like, what? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think they needed uh, that end scene <laughs> with um, fucking Marky Mark. I love shooting. that. That's my, my favorite yeah. bit. Because just when you think, because in a film, there's like, you know, there's a third act, and then it's just like, then it's like all the violence has stopped. Mm. Now 
we move on. And you're you're being lulled into like it's safe now. I'm leaving mm. the cinema, even though Leo had to. Leo. Yeah, yeah, yeah Leo had died, to go. Yeah. And then it's just like, no, we're not done killing yeah, you. Yeah. It's such a like, <laughs> oh God, why? <laughs> like, it's such it, was a almost, hit. it was almost like an after credit sequence. Wasn't yeah, it? It could have been. especially because that Mark Wahlberg character has been such a dick the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. And that then you're he's like, actually a hero. You're yeah. like, damn, I didn't want to <laughs> like you. <laughs> But I can't help it. Hang on. Oh, yeah, Darren Aronofsky. Mm. So my friend went to a Q&A with him. I yeah. love Black Swan. I thought that was so interesting and there was so mm. much in it. And I didn't, not just because it was like ballet and I love that, yeah. <laughs> but also because it was such a question of like, she's dehumanizing herself to do better art. And, yeah, and like at a certain fame, point, you just pursuing, go, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that I thought was so great. There was a Q&A about his new film and they said, you know, Requiem for a Dream... Yeah. All your other films, they probably listed them at the Q&A. And then yeah, they yeah. said, what is going on with you kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, and yeah. he said, just flat out, I guess it was Q&A for filmmakers, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but he just goes, well, and I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. He said exactly this. I do all my own stuff. Um, so he said, yeah, look, film is a really competitive market. Mm. Having the most aggressively disturbing things mm. is a thing that attracts audience and helps me build and sustain a financially viable career. And that is the decision I've made with that. That's sad. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For him as well, because he try and be like... Have you seen Noah? No. Okay, he made Noah, which was the funniest film I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So it's like a literal interpretation of the story of Noah from the Bible. But he's included... The the Ark guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Noah, like yeah, yeah. Noah, <laughs> Noah's Ark, it's Noah's right. Ark, yeah. but he's included all of the, like, so I mean, there's debate about what the correct translation is, right, but he's kept the most insane literal translation you can oh, get, cool. so there's rock monster angels in it, <laughs> for kind of no reason, because mm-hmm. the Bible's not really like, Bible why are said, these guys yes. around? Like, that's quite funny, it's, yeah. like, it's almost like to spite your manager at work. Yeah, well, <laughs> it feels like, like it's well, the if worst. if you say yeah. there's two seals, we're putting two seals <laughs> on the boat. The, it was like the worst advert for Christianity <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah. Because the, the whole thing is just Noah, Noah comes across as completely in, insensitive yeah. and murderous mm-hmm. and a genocidal maniac. Yep. Um, he creates the Ark. He has a family, and he's like, everyone in the family can bring a partner. Okay. Apart from my son, who I've called Ham. What? Yeah, and Ham, for most of the movie, is like, can I just bring a wife? And he's like, no. What? No. And there's a point where he finds a wife who mm-hmm. he saves from this like slave camp. He's like, yeah. she's beautiful. I've got to... Yeah. Noah lets her die. What? Like, she gets pushed over, and he can save her, and he's like, no, let her get crushed. And Ham's just like, ah. Oh but then God. poor Ham <laughs> has to live on the fucking ark yeah. with every animal known in existence in and his family oh in a couple God. he's the only single what? being on this incredible thing and he has to watch all of them fuck and, then the, and noah's and like the yes that's the, that's what i want he, for my son he doesn't have to watch he, <laughs> he does watch. no he does if you look at the layout of the fucking thing okay. you can't there's oh no God. way he doesn't okay. watch what? um okay and that was the origin story for incels <laughs> yes no literally but he is but um and then he tries to kill all his own children mm-hmm. and it and it turns into a horror movie. What? Yeah. Okay. And um, like the Bible. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But um, and it, it's bad. And there's an amazing character called Methuselah who uh, is Anthony Hopkins, and he he's only in it for like <laughs> he's in it for like three minutes. Hang and on, the, I can tell you exactly what happened. He, what, what, Anthony on. Hopkins agreed to a movie. <laughs> yeah. Showed up, had a look around, and just went. Yeah, I won't oh. be back tomorrow. And they <laughs> yeah, go, well, yeah. he's a name. We we'll, better get his name. We'll, on the we'll put it in the stock footage. <laughs> yeah. of him. But legit, the only scene he's in, they just go, oh my, like Noah's like, oh, we must talk to my grandfather Methuselah, and then it cuts to. Anthony Hopkins dressed as a barbarian with a fire sword and, and there's like a hundred barbarians running at him and he just swipes the sword and they all burst into flames and it's just like Methuselah like it literally looks like a Quentin Tarantino cut you know when they do they introduce yeah, yeah, yeah. all their really bastards yeah, yeah, yeah and they're like bam bam Hugo Stiglitz it's just like Methuselah the coolest granddad in the world Hang on, is this early Darren Aronofsky? Or no, is this, this is after Black Swan. Okay. This like movie the, got hang on, the next, hype. The next one after Black Swan. I believe so. Oh, so or then, in that in that period. Okay, so then he's maybe he's doing a thing where it's like, well, let me just like 
that thing of that George Lucas thing we talked about before. Oh, like, like, yeah, like, free reign. Keep going. Dude, do what you think. We don't know how you come Bro, up with these ideas. No, yeah. <laughs> He's just reading the Bible. <laughs> That's he probably, how does no, he come up I with it? I can see how that would happen because you would freak out. He would be freak out. He'd be traveling all the time. People would mm. be bigging him up at Black, Black Swan. There's a Bible in every hotel, right? Yeah. And he just would have been like, I don't have any ideas. And then you're just, you know, as you're looking around, the, it's the eyes. Some good stuff. Yeah, this is his I love lamp it moment. Probably, it probably was like a blank. It didn't say the Bible. <laughs> yeah, on the front it was one of those really know. weathered things yep, it's just yeah. like this script is amazing yeah so like, there were, yeah it's fake it's gonna be sequels galore yeah and then his room service of a ham sandwich arrived <laughs> yeah, and he was like yeah. you know what hold the sandwich i got some writing well, to also the sequel would just be the quran afterwards <laughs> <laughs> and then the prequels the torah but um he he also made that movie her did you see that where he just beats the shit out of Jennifer Aniston, who was his wife, hang on. for like I'm getting, two hours. Hang on, I've got the movies so wrong. I'm thinking of her as the movie with like Scarlett Johansson. No, Jennifer Aniston. Wait, do I mean Jennifer Aniston? I mean, no, I, Jennifer, no one gets beat up in the one I'm thinking of. Oh no, she gets the shit kicked out of her. It's I don't got think Javier that's... Bardem and um, no, not Jennifer Aniston is from Friends, isn't she? Yeah. Oh no, I'm not her. Um, <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, no. Oh, what's her name? Hang on. Uh, because She's in X-Men. She plays the blue lady in X-Men. Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Jennifer um, Lawrence. Do you mean the movie called Mother? Yes. Because the movie Her is like a beautiful thing with like Joaquin Phoenix and it's like... Oh, no, when he falls in, in love, love with the robot. Scarlett Sorry, no, completely different oh, movie. My God. That's I a good just, movie. That's, that's a good I, movie. Yeah, yeah. That's why you I think it's like, beautiful? That's, no, I do, that's not yeah. a beautiful movie. It is in a way. He that's just gets turbo cucked by a okay. sex bot. Yeah, okay, sure. When you put it that way. Or a love bot. But, it's, you but it's beautifully shot. Yeah. So yeah. if, you, if you didn't know the plot and yeah. you were just like listening to music, watching it and saying the things, yeah. then you'd be like, I feel... Yeah, but come on, a picture of like a dying cat can be like beautifully shot, but it's still like a well, more, dying more, cat. Well, I mean, coming from someone Sad. who just said the movie Her is about Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, yeah I got that one wrong. <laughs> I got that one wrong. But I'll mother, leave that in. <laughs> mother, <laughs> you can leave that in. That's fine. I'm happy to die. You I have a terrible memory. I make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, mother... Fucking dog awful movie. Yes. Shot brilliantly. Okay. And they kill a baby in it. I couldn't watch. I didn't watch it. I wouldn't watch it. It's I so didn't. stressful. I yeah. wouldn't watch it. But yeah. it's, it's not stressful for a point. It's just like you leave it exactly. and you're like, I'm so confused. This, but then, is this a metaphor? Yeah. Is this some. But then this is what you have to think about for him. I get what he's saying about this is how you make money, etc. Oh. Um, but. <laughs> And as someone who could afford to make more money, it's like, okay, you, maybe you could listen to that twice, Laura. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that said, he would have to sit in and edit for that. Yeah. Like, he would have to watch it again and again and again, and you mm. just go, uh, that sucks. Also, that strategy might not work. No. There, there'll be one where it's a flop, and then you've made the most disturbing, upsetting movie that leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Yeah. And they're like, why the fuck did you make that perverted movie? Yeah. And it's... you're like, oh, I really thought everyone would like it. Or well, like create loads well, of controversy. Not, it would, it's not even I thought people would like it. It's like I thought people would be really uncomfortable. Yeah. It's such yeah. a like, okay, like. <laughs> Thanks, what? dude. We yeah, are. <laughs> if anything, I wish that we could just be like, hey, man. You've got money, I yeah. assume. You know, you're fine. You won some awards for Black Swan. You're good. Mm. What would you like to make? You know, just like, what would you like to do? That, like, we could just do one nice film. That would so be fine. Yes. George has already made that movie. <laughs> People don't understand stand up comedy at all. In what like, way? It's, like, it's such I mean, a I bizarre. Agree, no, but, but, I mean, but be more specific. But, but like, they don't understand. Uh, well, it's like. Even the people go to stand up comedy mm. don't understand that like you can't talk, yeah, and you shouldn't heckle. I think well, <laughs> and I... the number of times that this happens, yeah, is insane. That I'm like, surely it's obvious that like you wouldn't go to a play and just be like, oh, you're like the, do you know what I mean? You're like, like the ad for piracy from the nineties. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't go to a you wouldn't play. go to a play. You wouldn't. You wouldn't, you get wouldn't on slit the... your throat and tell the doctor <laughs> to fix it. <laughs> um, but but I, it... I think people that heckle. I think they think they're adding something to it as someone who's like... Yeah, but you, I, you could know, do that at a play. What, like, just like, tell them to not! Yeah, yeah like... <laughs> but, but like, if you're like... Yeah, I know exactly... I know, and it's yeah. so annoying. Yeah, but, yeah. But also, sometimes there's people that heckle because their, like, intent is like, I want to throw this person off, I'm annoyed at them, yeah. I hate women, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. But sometimes it is like, they're like... Uh, like, they're up for a bit of a, like... 
laugh <laughs> and they don't they just think like oh, i'll say it. you know i'll yeah. throw something in the ring sometimes it is like a bit playful it's never warranted and it's never no, welcome but it's, it's <laughs> so rarely helpful or improves the show <laughs> Uh, there was one. There was okay. There's one comedian that was like, "I'll show you how to heckle," and it's like quite good. Yeah. And I was like, "No." He'll show funny. you how. To, like he like, was gonna heckle. He was gonna heckle. He comment. was like, "So basically, it was a gong show." So gong, oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. gong shows for context, you get up at a gong show. The audience have a card or a gong or whatever, and once you get three warnings, you're off. So yeah. people get up, and sometimes, and the fun, the control is in the audience, so they like dominate a bit, and it's quite yeah. funny in that sense. That, funny if you that, don't have to do. I think heckle the shit out of them. Yes, That's funny. Yeah. But this was the this was the heckle, right? As they get to the stage, before as they take the mic out, before they even start speaking, because once Abby got gonged off before she started, and that's not funny. That's not funny, and it's not personal because no, no, because is, she's not. No, no, be- it is funny because like because she's it, it is she's, funny she's in the cosmic she's, she's, in the cosmic she's world. Such, it is funny such, that they would be such twats. And also, she's such a she's so beautiful. And Which Abby is? Abby, Abby Carter, Carter Simpson. Simpson. Yeah, she's okay, she's very hair, inno- lovely. She's got yeah, a, like yeah. sunny personality, and she walks up with a ukulele, with a g- <laughs> swings the ukulele up to start speaking, and they gong her, and it's like that. Like I can see how objectively, like it's a shame, but it was. Fun. Funny. And, and so, anyway, what he said was, you just have to say something factual about them that isn't offensive. So as yeah. as they take the mic out, you just go perfect, like perfectly quiet, so that the people around you hear them, and it slowly builds. Just something like, he's wearing glasses. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Energy dead. Yeah, because then everyone yeah. just starts laughing, and yeah. the person can't respond to that because they are wearing glasses. Yeah, yeah. It's just like. What? Like, it's yeah, such a... it immediately creates a separation of yeah, like, and if you're someone... the butt of the joke. Yeah, like you're and then the you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, status. Um, but Mind yes. you, that said, I remember I the first gong show I won, mm-hmm. I <laughs> had gone to the. Of many. <laughs> of many. Of many. Um, I remember I went. Hang on. Wait, say it again, except go. The first gong show I won. Well, it was the first gong show I did, but anyway. Going <laughs> 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 to my 100% win streak of winning everything I ever do. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know if that makes me better than other people or not. I'm uh, not the judge. You, you decide, but mathematically, <laughs> yes. <Sort of>. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the, the act was on before me. I needed to do a pit, and I was really nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went for a pit, and I was wearing like light green trousers. Oh, and no. I did my piss badly. Yeah. Um. By that, all over the front of my trousers because okay. I had this huge piss patch. <laughs> but like, <laughs> not like little, not like a little dribble out your yep. foreskin. Like okay. I pissed yep. about two fifths of my piss into my <laughs> pants. That's okay. Like a lot. Let's call it what it was. You pissed your pants. No, no, but I didn't. I I pissed into oh, my just, pants, oh, just but I don't. Like well, okay. no, no, because no, I, I had just started pissing out of my pants. Yes, okay. And then I then I switched to <laughs> okay. pissing in my pants because you didn't want to take too long. And I, I was just nervous. Okay. I was right. nervous. <laughs> I just put it in too soon. I withdrew yeah, okay. too soon. All right. Great. Um, and then I was like, "Fuck! I I'll tell the MC that no, I need to go on later." Oh, I thought you were like, "I'll tell the MC." No, no, no. Hey, man, just so you know, <laughs> no, I pissed my pants. Well, no, but that was my plan. They I was probably like, get that all the time, to be honest. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, and then when I went into the room, the mm. actor was on stage, got gonged off, and the MC yeah. ran on stage and was like, please welcome to the stage, Luke uh, Chilton. No. Yep. And so I had to go up with piss all over my trousers and just be like, guys, I've, I've pissed myself. How <laughs> and did it go? They found it fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it was horrendously embarrassing, but I won the gong show. But like, also they were being uh, such cunts. Like yeah, I've not seen yeah. them. Like they hadn't let anyone through, and yeah, the only reason yeah. they let me through was because I was so humiliated at the beginning. Yeah, that they were like, "Yes, you I can. Put, you can do your jokes now that, that you're a on, fucking worm." Is that the one that's the Monday Night Comedy Store one? No, no, no. This is up the creek, oh, which is right. normally friendly. Yeah, but that yeah. night they were like out, out for, for blood. blood. Everyone yeah. was getting so gonged off. They were trying to happens. do it before because yeah. you normally get two minutes where yeah. they can't gong you off. But they were heckling. They were fucking putting their cards up tw- like twenty yeah. seconds in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I guess if you, you want to win, you just piss yourself and then they find That's it really funny. That's a bold strategy. Yeah. See if it pays off. Yeah. But also that makes sense because the whole thing about that type of energy of like, we want to, we like, we are a bunch of, I mean, I'm thinking of the comedy store one, but it's yeah, a Monday yeah. night. Bankers have come down and they're like, yeah. we want to like. We want to see humiliation. We want to see a yeah. nerd piss themselves. Yeah. And so you kind of gave them that. At, at I gave them what one. they wanted. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, look, <laughs> I'm a like, mess. They were like, keep this guy around. He knows yeah. what we want. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's actually great. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that that worked in my favor, but um, it's probably not gonna be like the Bill Burr tape where he comes out and like yells at the audience. People aren't gonna be like for years to come like Luke Chilton pissed pants. himself. <laughs> like, it, but it might, you know, people. It are, might, yeah. Know. I mean, they did film it. So it was like, <laughs> oh, they put that online. Yeah, well, they put probably. that online. I think it, I think I asked them to take. <laughs> not because I pissed myself, but like I just didn't. It was like the start. Yeah, well, my comedy yeah. was not so good. Jesus, it definitely doesn't get easier. Mm-hmm. Idea? I have no idea. How you come up with ideas? No, mm-hmm. I'll literally just be walking around or like my good ideas yep. have all literally been like, huh, oh yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I'm not even doing anything. When you're not focused yeah, on it. Yeah, or, or someone's been like, that's hilarious what you just said. And I'm like, what? And then, they're <laughs> they're like, like, and then I, I like write I it down. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh yeah, that is... Um, <laughs> That that is funny, I guess. Mm-hmm. But nothing I think is funny is ever funny. But I like movies like Kung Pao. Yeah. That that to me is hilarious. But it's because Kung Pao is like, it's obviously written by a funny person, so, mm-hmm. and they've written what they find funny. Yeah. Which is like, you know, it's the same way when you you've been in comedy a long time. What you find funny and sup- you need something to be surprising for it to be funny. Yeah. So you so start you won't liking. Be surprised. You're, yeah. It's the yeah. same way musicians start loving yeah. jazz music because yeah. it's insane. Yeah. But the general yeah. audience are going to be like, this is What's trash. Happening? Yeah. So he's made a comedy jazz movie. Yeah. Which a few comedians are going to be like, I enjoy this because <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. But this is like the way I prefer open mic comedy to. I prefer watching yes. open mic comedy and yeah. how cringe it gets. Yeah. To yeah, that's watching where the someone is. who's really good. Yeah, yeah I'm just yeah. like, this is hilarious. And I don't know what's going to happen. Do you know mm. what I mean? I'm like, this is genuinely. Or just watching someone, I'm like, Jesus, you just made the worst decision. Yeah. I'm like, it's so what? clear what you should have done. Yeah. <laughs> it's so clear you could have got out of this. Yeah. And now you've made it worse. <laughs> um, Somehow you you sound like a pedophile. <laughs> like, uh, and that, but then the worst is, like, if once you're in a. Once you've dug yourself into a hole, mm. it's like. You just keep digging. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like well, such well, a... You're an amateur. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> like they're just like Jesus, mm. and they're also under so much pressure because they have stage fright. Yeah, and they want yeah. it so badly to go well, so they're flailing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and I'm like, there is nothing funnier and, than and watching also, someone fucking that, I just think dive into the ground. <laughs> that's the other thrill of open mic is you're flailing, but. You're flailing in front of essentially no one. Yeah. Like if like it's but, not. But to them, it's everyone. Yeah. To them, they're, this is the most important thing they've ever done. It's so wild, um, isn't it? It's 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 delicious. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah. That should be a it should be a requirement that once a year everyone has to do an open mic. Yeah. <laughs> the, the funniest thing I've ever seen is like because because I'll laugh if like I try not to laugh cruelly, but the other thing sometimes is, I'm like I am obviously laughing at you, but sometimes open micers will just be like. They'll hear me laugh and they'll be like, "Oh, that joke works." It was and good. I'm like, yeah, oh, I've got oh no, him. no, yeah. no, no! You have yeah. no idea why that's funny. Yeah. It's not because of the joke. Yeah, there's no repeatability. Yeah. It's almost like you... I'm laughing at the future when you look back at this. Yeah, I'm yeah. laughing that you thought that was a joke. Yeah, like, that's it's an hard. insane then, thing you just said. But then said. it's also in a way it's supportive because it's like it breaks the silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... yeah. Which I do think it is better. It's better if people laugh at you. Yeah, I don't know because and then like when they're but it depends whether they can take the humiliation or not because. It is sad if they get upset. But also if, you, yeah, like, oh, anyone, yeah, yeah. it's sad. But, I mean, it's sometimes funny if they But also, <laughs> you have to, you kind of have to just be, get, not used to humiliation, but. It's, it's, it's part of the job, com- it's, yeah. it's a bit of a, it's a low status job, it's, um, or perf- as far as entertainment goes, it's like. It's the, it's the scum of art forms, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But then. That's why I don't like it when, sometimes people get big and they only play to their audience and you're a bit mm. like, nah, you're. Go on, do something humiliating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop believing in. I don't know. Comedians, I think, should be on on that sort of. I don't know. Slightly, they shouldn't really be celebrities. They should kind of be. They're jesters. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and like, also kind of. They can only. It's like they can only be a celebrity if they're going to be constantly undermined. That's yeah. what's funny. Yeah, like yeah. it's just like, come yeah. on, you have to. Keep well, they, they, they to they to me were always a link between 
regular people and celebrities. They're yeah. not actually either or. They're yeah. somewhere in between. You know what it feels like? It feels like when one of your friends goes to a party with like a bunch of like rich people or celebrities or whatever, mm. and then they come back and they say, yeah, this is what happened. And you're yeah. just going, what? Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. This is yeah. Uh, fine. But no, in terms of ideas and stuff, um, I don't know. I do try and sit down and just write. But mm-hmm. I don't know how effective it is. I mean, it can. It is good. I, I've started watching lots of. Uh, I'll film myself now and mm-hmm. just rewatch. Yeah. Which I used to not do, and actually yeah. that's quite helpful. Yeah. Um, a, lo- a lot of the time, I just say stuff accidentally on stage. Yeah, yeah. And, and often just... when you get off stage, because it feels like it, you're in a different realm or something. Yeah. Like a different. Well, you're under so much more pressure when there's people watching. Yeah. So it's like yeah. normally I find if I try and write off stage on my own it's like i've not quite got the wording right yeah and then i need to say it on stage and then i write down what i say on stage i'm like yeah. that's how i say it naturally and whatever. also when you're writing you're you're sitting still yeah and that's just never how you're yeah performing your brain's you're moving not firing and you're this, a, so it's like yeah uh, yeah it's true. Um, yeah i find that but i like i because i do so much or at least this past year i've been doing so much film stuff Mm. The editing thing, it's so odd that when you're editing, you're like, it feels like the same as stand up in the sense that you're like in a separate, <laughs> I don't want to say dimension, but like, <laughs> you know, like you're, <laughs> you know, wow. One, <laughs> editing sounds intense. Yeah. No, I mean, like, when you're on stage, it's like a separate self almost yeah. for a couple of, like for however for a couple of minutes <laughs> yeah, however yeah. long you're on stage for in the same way when i'm editing something it is like once you sit down you're in the world of that film mm. i guess like playing a video game right? yeah, yeah. where it's just like you're immersed in something and then when you come back out you're not you're never quite it's not like i did this and i did this it's sort of trance like mm. where you're like yeah you know, I mean, particularly well, for I mean, live stuff, I mean, you you do lose yourself because I think your adrenaline just shoots up so high. So it's like you go in a... Yeah. Y- your brain's working so fast. It's like when you forget a bit when you're live on stage and you're like, God, I've been silent for 10 minutes. And then yeah. you watch the video and it was like oh, half I said a that. second. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Okay. And have you got anything that you want to plug? Uh, well, I'm doing a bunch of previews, but <laughs> I haven't booked them yet. So I don't okay. have any dates or locations. Okay. Um, but if you add me on Instagram, mm-hmm. Luke Chilton Comedian, mm-hmm. then I can direct you to my website when I've built that. Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> and then okay. you wow, can attend a show. This is real treasure hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, which is actually good in this day and age. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, yeah. I want to be the, uh, difficult know, to find. I, yeah, I want to yeah. be the, you know, treat me and keep them keen. Yeah, I like fucking, that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a bit aloof. Yeah. Um, Because I, I don't want a career. I, I, will say, <laughs> I don't want a career. I will, I will say to anyone who might be listening. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that'd be worth the search. Luke's very funny. I'm um, very funny and, and funny and in funny and thoughtful. Like it's not just like, <laughs> da, 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 da. like that's my impression. Of it. No, I mean, like, funny and thoughtful. Quite... Yeah, frequently on stage, yeah, I just I... go silent and <laughs> stop pondering, <laughs> pondering I mean. life. And then... And then I'm like, oh, oh, oh so sorry. I fuck it. Don't I come to any of my shows. Don't do it. I was it. just thinking. The nightmare. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, <laughs> in, the, in the sense that some people do bits that are straight funny, and some yeah. people they're straight funny, but they've also got something for your mind to kind of flip between at the same time. Oh, do you feel that way? Yes. Oh, that's nice. About your stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was good. Yeah. Don't neg me now. What do you mean I'm negging you? You're like, okay, yeah, maybe it is intellectual for you. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, you think my lowbrow cock jokes are some sort of metaphor for something. Oh, yeah, it's exactly what we said before where it's like, I'm a Darren Aronofsky. It looks deep, but it's (laughs) fucking nonsense. (laughs) It's just me trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, Well, thank you. Thank you. And come back anytime. Thank you. This show is proudly brought to you by Islington Radio and ILO.co.uk. ILO.co.uk is the UK's first by women for women sexual health and well-being online store. And that's ILOH.co.uk. If you enjoyed the show, please drop us a comment. Let us know what film you'd like us to review. Or you could leave us a review or a like, a subscribe, any of those things. I know everyone says stuff like that, but it really does make a difference. Thanks.